hi guys welcome to today's session and today we are going to discuss about uh, Kyoto protocol and it is a protocol uh, related with environment pollution so in this session we will first see an overview of uh, Kyoto protocol and uh, then we will analyze what is common but differentiated responsibilities of Kyoto protocol and uh, then we will discuss the, what is the commitment period of Kyoto protocol and uh, there is a provision of flexible market mechanisms in Kyoto protocol we will see what is that and finally we will see the criticism of uh, Kyoto protocol so that's how I plan this session let's now start so guys the Kyoto protocol was adopted in Kyoto which is in Japan in 1997 and India ratified Kyoto protocol in 2002 and the Kyoto Protocol came into force in February 2005 and there are currently 192 parties to Kyoto Protocol and the major fact is that USA never ratified Kyoto Protocol and Canada withdrew from Kyoto Protocol in uh, 2012 and the goal of this uh, protocol is to fight global warming by reducing greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere to a level that would prevent uh, dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system. Uh, so Kyoto Protocol is aimed at uh, to cut emissions of greenhouse gases across the developed world by about 5% by 2012 compared with uh, 1990 levels. So that is the aim and the protocol is based on principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and it is the only global treaty with binding limits on greenhouse gas emissions so uh, please keep that fact in mind that it is the only global treaty with binding limits on greenhouse gas emissions and uh, now we will see what is this common but differentiated responsibilities of uh, Kyoto protocol so common but differentiated responsibilities puts obligation to reduce current emissions on developed countries on the basis that uh, they are historically responsible for the current levels of uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and uh, CBDR that is common but differentiated responsibilities divides countries into two categories one is that historically biggest polluting developed countries like US, UK, France, Japan and Russia etc in one group they are polluting the earth since industrial revolution and uh, another group is recently polluting developing countries like uh, China, India, Brazil, etc., which are polluting the uh, world since 1950s. So, common that means every country, uh, both developing and developed countries, must take part in the fight against climate change. But differentiated responsibilities means historically, biggest polluters should do more compared to recent polluters. That is, responsibilities proportional to pollution cost. Thus, under CBDR, developed countries, use US, UK, etc. must contribute more to reduce uh, greenhouse gases. They must accept to certain binding limits on greenhouse gas emissions and they must contribute funds towards uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions in developing and the least developed countries. On the other hand, developing and least developed countries should do everything possible to cut down their greenhouse gas emissions but nothing is binding on them and every initiative is voluntary so that is the difference between the two groups and also uh, the Kyoto protocol classifies uh, countries into different annexes or groups uh, in annex 1 we can see developed countries uh, and uh, in annex 2 uh, there uh, it is also a subset of annex 1 developed countries only but required to provide financial and technical support uh, to economies in transition uh, and developing countries to assist them in reducing their greenhouse gas emissions and you can see annex b that is uh, annex 1 parties with first or second round kyoto greenhouse gas emission targets and uh, then there is one non-annex group so these are basically and uh, you can see least developed countries also so these are basically uh, uh, they are classifying countries according to their pollution pollution uh, pollution limits so and also developed countries are in the annex one annex two and uh, you can see the developing countries and least developing countries in various groups so please uh, go through uh, this um, 
uh, classification once and uh, you will get to know which all countries are in which group and so that that is it and uh, now we'll see what is the commitment period under Kyoto protocol under uh, Kyoto protocol there are two commitment periods one is 2008 to 2012 and 2013 to 2020 the second commitment period was agreed on in 2012 which is known as Doha amendment to the protocol and each commitment period has its own binding targets uh, set for developed countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and uh, nations that miss their Kyoto target in 2012 will incur a penalty of an additional third added uh, to whatever cut they agree under new treaty in Copenhagen and during the first commitment period that is 2008 to 2012 more than 35 countries had binding targets and uh, Canada withdraw in 2012 after the first commitment period and Japan, New Zealand and Russia have participated in Kyoto's first round but have not taken on new targets in the second commitment period and as of January uh, 2019 124 states have ac accepted the Doha amendment while entering into force request the acceptance of uh, 144 states thus the second commitment period is a failure and negotiations uh, were held in Lima in 2014 uh, to agree on post Kyoto legal framework that would obligate all major pollutants to pay for their CO2 emissions. China, India and United States, they are the uh, three main pollutant, uh, polluting countries and they have all signaled that they will not ratify any treaty that will commit them legally to reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions. So uh, this uh, debate is going on and uh, now we will see what are the uh, emission targets or the Kyoto Protocol emission target gases included in this protocol. Uh, one is uh, carbon dioxide, then we can see methane is there, uh, nitrous oxide is there that is N2O and uh, sulfur hexafluoride is there SF6 and you can see group of hydrofluorocarbons HCFs and uh, uh, you can see groups of uh, perfluorocarbons that is PFCs. So these are the uh, emission target gases under Kyoto protocol and uh, guys there is a flexible market mechanism under this protocol. We will now see what are the flexible market mechanisms under the Kyoto protocol. Countries are bound to Kyoto targets have to meet them largely through domestic action that is to reduce uh, their emissions onshore. But uh, they can meet a part of the targets through uh, three market based mechanisms that is flexible market mechanisms and which includes one is clean development mechanism and one is emission trading and one is joint implementation. So CDM or uh, clean development mechanism allows a country with an emission reduction or emission limitation commitment under the Kyoto protocol majorly annex B party. Uh, so it allows the countries to implement an emission reduction project in developing countries that is CDM and uh, in emission trading uh, under carbon credits trading mechanism um, countries that emit more carbon than the quota allotted to them buy carbon credits from those that emit less so that is uh, emission trading that uh, the countries that emit more carbon than the quota they allotted to them uh, they buy carbon credits from those countries that emit less and uh, you can see uh, the third mechanism is joint implementation which allows a country with an emission reduction commitment under the quota protocol uh, to aid emission reduction units from an emission reduction project in another annex B party each equivalent to one ton of CO2 which can be countered towards meeting its quota target. So this mechanism is basically uh, it allows a country with an emission reduction commitment under Kyoto protocol then this country may be annex B party and this country uh, can earn emission reduction units from an emission reduction project in another annex B party and each equivalent to one ton of carbon dioxide and which can be counted towards uh, meeting its Kyoto targets. So that are the flexible market mechanism that uh, 
uh, three of them are clean development mechanism emission trading and joint implementation and now we will see a uh, few criticism of uh, Kyoto protocol so under Kyoto protocol annex one countries can meet their targets by cutting emissions or by buying unused allowances carbon credits and carbon trading from other countries so this kind of approach ignores long term and social economic cost it is like committing only half of what one needs to commit and uh, Kyoto protocol is based on common but differentiated responsibility approach uh, to global warming and under CBDR many countries were allowed to increase pollution which is also a criticism and it is it excluded most polluting countries like China and India which have since become the world's largest and fourth largest polluters so these are the few criticism of uh, Kyoto protocol anyways um, this is a very important topic with related to your preparation uh, this uh, can be asked in mains a uh, few questions are asked in the pre previous years also and also in related with your mains exam also is a very important topic so please study this guys uh, that's all for today we'll meet tomorrow with another lesson thank you for watching this video